Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Otaku Heaven coming at you with another manga chapter review. Today I'll be reviewing manga chapter 32 of Black Clover, and this chapter had some pretty significant plot progression. Now it starts off with um Radis being captured, right? He's sitting there basically on his knees and we get we see um another one of Leo Fuego's moves. He does a um flame bind. Leo palm is what he calls it, and basically it binds him up with two flame palms. And Radis is like, get your palms off of me. I can still fight. I've still got plenty of mana power. And after he's captured, um, we we got to see a page. We got to see his book. They confiscated his book, and they realized that it only has one page. He was a really weak mage, even though he had mana power that surpassed even the royalty. And as we know in this manga, the royalty are said to have much greater power than anybody from the outer country even though it's not really looking true because a lot of the people from the outer country right now are like very powerful like Aston um Juno and Radis now and basically after that um we got to see there was like a earpiece or something um next to in his, in his ear and he's like are you satisfied now so it suggested that maybe he was being controlled and we could see a swap over to him being an actual magic knight at some point later on. Potentially in the Black Bulls because his power is unharnessed yet. I I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that because there is some significant plot progression that I'll have to talk about later on that might dis discount that at all. Um, on top of that, we got to finally, finally find out what the pretty witch's name is. Her name is Catherine. Didn't really get to see much on that, but basically she was defeated as well. And all of a sudden, um, he said, did you get, he's like, did you get what you want? Did you finally get acknowledged? He's like, um, no, that's not what I wanted. I'm getting what I wanted. He's like, the target was you, Fuego of the Crimson Lion. And he was, um, well, that was right before Fuego was like, where's the teleporter? We've accounted for everybody except for him. And then, then he said that, you know, you were the target and then, he was teleported away, and the leader of Fuego was like, fine, I'll go into the lion's den, I won't run away, and then he just got teleported into an alternate dimension of sorts that looked like, um, basically a time dimension, sort of like what you would see on, um, the Gray Man, if you've watched that, the, the one chick, well, I forget her name, but she, she could control time with a limited space, and basically it teleported her to an alternate, alternate dimension, sort of like, um, Noah's Ark or something, and that retrospect but basically after um after they were teleported in Asta finds the teleport mage he was disguised in a whole play a whole body full pile full of bodies basically asked to cut that revealing him and then he jumps up on top of a church or either he was already up on top of the church and he found him that way somehow that was disguised in the church as um you know a pile of bodies but Asta found them out real quick and he's like I don't care I'm already done here and then he goes to teleport, and he removes his mask first to reveal uh, reveal a weird, weird face. And I don't really know how to explain it, but it's um like Phantom, a Requiem of the Phantom. It kind of reminded me of that um, mask that they're wearing all the time. And then he teleports away, dumping um Fuego's dead body. Or I'm assuming he's dead because he's laying on the ground looking lifeless and motionless, but so far his arm is the only thing to cut off, so he may still be able to be saved, but he's bleeding extremely bad right now, so we don't know that he's actually dead yet, but it's a good it's a good hand he's dead. He's pretty I mean, he looks pretty dead, but you know how animes and mangas do, they like to bring people back to life if they're not, you know, one hundred percent confirmed dead. But with this going on and even if he was, since he was being controlled, he might get off the hook if he was being controlled. But in the event that he wasn't being controlled, and that earpiece was not an actual earpiece, and he was just doing this based off of like somebody's death wish or something, like um, someone else got banished to and asked him to, you know, just get back at the kingdom or something, and it was been bu uh, bugging him in his mind real bad, then he might not get away with it because he did uh, kill a bunch of innocent civilians on top of um, you know, foot being part of the conspiracy to assassinate, um, you know, Fuego of the Crimson Lion, the leader. Now, in the event that he is actually completely dead, it will be very interesting to see who actually takes over the Crimson Lion now, because we don't have really any 
idea who else is in the Crimson Lion too much. We've got a little bit of tidbits here and there about certain characters, but we really don't have too much much of a character roster, especially names, because we have a lot of characters that are are unnamed so far. Um, it's, it's just inter inter interesting to see how the power balance is going to flip right here. And since um, Asta just lost his rival of the Crimson Lion to become the Source Emperor, what's going to happen if he actually is dead? But overall, the plot progression was pretty good, and there wasn't really any character progression at all. But it was a pretty climactic episode as what as to what happened, because um, he's a pretty important member in the Magic Knights and in the whole city, basically. So um, overall, I'm probably going to give this chapter like a... Mm, it's a 6 out of 10 because we didn't really get much out of it except for the fact that old dude died and then there really wasn't much to it but that's all guys peace